Hi, good people. It's Amy from Saver Salvage Scent. I hope this finds you doing really well in spite of all of the world's challenges. Um, for those of you who are new to the channel, this mostly focuses on all things perfume and fragrance related with an occasional other creative or DIY project. For those of you returning, thank you so much for being here. If you haven't yet, I sure hope that you will click the red subscribe button. It helps me stay in touch and get to know you. Um, learn alongside you and um, enjoy this weird hobby together. Um, today I want to talk with you about, I'm kind of continuing a series of um, sniffing decants or samples or perfumes gifted by friends, etc. And so today I'm going to talk about a batch of phenomenal um, scents that my friend R Richard Keycott uh, provided. I'm going to link his channel below if you're not familiar. I just think he's um, an incredible person, so interesting. And um, so if you haven't experienced his fragrance channel, click it below, he's so cool. So um, this is such an interesting diversity of scents. And there are some things on here that I, I mean, houses that I've literally wanted to try for years, and then a lot that I am not familiar with. And then a few that I think have been super hyped. And so I was somewhat interested to try uh, for that reason too. Um, so I'm just gonna dive right in and like literally in no um, particular order. And um, yeah, here we go. So um, I did quickly spray each of these and um, wrote the names down, but I wanna talk to you about what my experiences are. Um, the first is, um, this is one that I was totally unfamiliar with. It just says JCB number zero, Eau de Parfum. Um, and then I realized it's, um, gosh, how do you say the name? Jean Charles is a, I'm not sure the last name, but it's a, um, it's a company that makes, um, wine and spirits. And, um, when I first sprayed this, I got, um, I wrote down citrus and cedar, or I got like what felt like a, a, a wood that had like an aromatic quality. Um, it's interesting because when I read about the scent, um, it's really supposed to smell like, I believe the oak barrels um, tied to burgundy or another wine. And so it's supposed to also have maybe a bit of like a, a smoky or a boozy quality. Also, it's supposed to be vanillic. When it dries down, I mean, maybe the vanilla comes out in the softness of it um, once it dries down. But I really just got, I got a really beautiful wood perfume. Um, a really, really pretty wood perfume. Um, I like it. It's not something that I would buy. Um, this is something that I have a few of and that will suit me fine for the fall and winter. Um, very interesting. Um, and I would say like interesting to me, but not a love or not something I have to have, um, but super cool to experience it. it. The next is, um, I have never tried anything by Nikolai Parfumer. Um, heard a lot about it, but I, I just have never, I don't even know where they're sold in the city that I live. I don't know if they are. Um, this was really, really cool to try. Um, this is called New York Intense. Um, it's interesting because uh, a viewer of the channel and my Instagram named Wolf um, from Belgium just today, or if in the last few days requested that I do a video on soapy scents. And I was like, gosh, I don't, I don't know that I've ever seen a video about that. I mean, specifically. Um, and I thought it was such a neat idea. And so I'm start, starting to like, think about what are the soapy scents in my collection. And it was funny that I sprayed this today because I was like, this smells like really, really high-end soap to me. Like the most gorgeous, like a super high-end soap that you would get in a hotel. It reminds me a tiny, tiny bit of um, Bulgari's, uh, Bulgari's um, the, the green tea scent that I believe John claude Elena created. It was one of my favorite, first fresh favorite scents. Um, this reminds me a little of that. What did I write down quickly when I sprayed it? Um, I wrote, yeah, I get fresh citrus soap and aromatics. It reminds me a fair amount of like, if you like scents in the lane of uh, Caron Eau de Reglisse or Clarins Eau Dynamassant. This kind of has that like fresh 
citrusy aromatic quality. I This is a love for me, but the only reason I don't need it is because I have a few scents that those, those are literally two of my favorite scents that smell similar to it. So I, I really, 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 really love this, but I don't need it for that reason, but it's gorgeous. Phenomenal scent, beautiful. Um, really loved trying that. Um, next, okay, which one is this? Um, now, forgive me, because again, some of these are brand new to me. I hope this is pronounced, it looks like Amarud, um, as in like maybe like Love and Oud, more and Oud, maybe Amarud. Um, the scent is called Oud du Jour, so Oud of the Day. And I have to be honest, I was like really afraid because um, I, I'm just, you know, so something I've learned about collecting perfumes or experienced perfumes over 20, no, 30 plus years is there are things that grow on you just like music or other types of art. There, there, you know, are artists that I used to look at that I was like, eh, and then I totally learned to love or grew to love. And there is music, some of my favorite music, the first time I heard it, I'd be like, I don't know. And it's because frankly, I had less experience with it. And, um, you know, there was some learning about, um, so Oud for years, I thought that it is one of those things. Maybe perhaps I just don't have enough experience. I'm going to give it up at this point that I just don't think this girl loves Oud a lot. Um, there are a few perfumes I have that of course have Oud in it, but, um, perfumes that are Oud centric, I find are challenging for me. Um, this is probably one of the nicest Oud perfumes as far as what I like that I have ever smelled. Um, I get, I wrote shellacked wood, pepper, and patchouli. Um, when it dries down, I especially like it. I think I could absolutely, you know, having this decant, I could definitely wear this in the fall or winter, enjoy it more. Um, this is a scent for some reason, and it's funny because I'm the first to say that like, I don't really, I, I don't really believe in the idea of gender and perfume. I think if you like something, you should wear it. Um, it's the same right, way I feel about like, I think men look phenomenal in pink. And, um, you know, if I want to wear male fragrance, I'm going to wear it. I don't care about the rules that society has kind of, um, placed on us. Having said all that though, ha, when I smell this, I go, not for me, but for some reason, I would like to smell this, um, on somebody in my life, male perhaps. Um, yeah. So to me, this, this feels a bit more like what I find to be like male marketed perfumes, um, maybe it's the wood quality and it also could be weird, but my dad, um, my dad was an industrial arts teacher and a woodworker and our house always smelled like this. So part of this, I associate this smell with my father. So it could be that simple, honestly, but it's a really, really nice wood perfume. It's not something I would wear, but it is absolutely beautiful. And I, I would love smelling it on other people or having my house smell like this. Um, so that is Amarud's Eau de Jour. Very interesting. I would love to know more about like this house. I, I've never heard anything about them. Um, the next one is Mask de Milano. Okay, so here's a, there are a couple houses in here that literally I've been wanting to try so much and a few of their perfumes on the top of my try list. And so I was so excited. So Mask de Milano, it looks like it's Dolce de Aqua. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And I just wrote down, this is the first one that I had a reaction to of like, oh my God, I wrote, Oh my God, gorge, gorgeous. Um, I wrote sweet floral musk water. <sighs> this is so nice. It to me smells like a sauna or a spa with the most beautiful soap. And that soap happens to be, have a little floral and musk, but I definitely get like a soapy aromatic spa -like quality from this. And it is, you know, Dolce de Aqua, so it's basically like sugar water um, or sweet of water. It smells, it is really sweet, like in the way that honey is sweet or orange flower is sweet. Um, or some musks can be like almost like tooth achingly sweet. That's the way this is sweet. And I happen to just love it. I cannot wait to wear this. Um it's so beautiful and it excites me. The, the scent that I've had on my list for a long time by this house is Lost Alice. I'm dying to have that or try it. Um, I'm not spending a lot of money on perfume right now. I bought myself a special perfume for my birthday. I'll talk about this later, um, which comes up in a few days. But 
I um this is a scent I, I I'm so excited about the house based on the scent so Richard thank you so much for sharing this this is so cool I'm interested in hearing if you liked any of these a lot um, you know um all right next this one okay this is another one I have been dying to try this house and I my mind was blown when I saw this name in this box of delights um so I have been wanting to try perfumes by, I hope I'm pronouncing the name right. Um, I think it said Mio, Mio Fushini. Um, my guess is this person is Italian. Uh, I probably should have done a little more research, but the, the reason this name, this perfumer's name is on my list is one, I watched a really great um, video and I'll link it below. Or wait, was it a video? I hope it, anyways, I hope I, I can access it and link it below. If not, I will link the person's channel below. A YouTuber named Mr., or he calls himself Mr. Clone 76, I think is really great. And a friend of mine, hi Krista, um, told me about, oh my gosh, he's interviewing Black Thought, who is um, one of our favorites, he, uh, musician, so from The Roots. Um, I think the guys in The Roots are just like, uh, consummate artists, tastemakers, and they've also, I feel like, gotten a lot of, like, um, press or uh, attention because they're, like, just stylish and artistic in every way, and so um, I was really excited to hear about the sense that Black Thought um, enjoy or has experienced, and I wrote down a list of things I wanted to try based on some of his favorites, some of his older favorites, and mine uh, kind of lined up. Um, he loved, you know, old school obsession, for instance, as do I love both the male and the female marketed obsession. But he had written about or talked about um, this artist's perfume called Little Song, and I just love that name and um, have other people have heard other really interesting people talk about it. I also noticed that Francesca Bianchi, one of my favorite, favorite, favorite kind of indie perfumers, who I think is just again, a consummate artist and such an interesting person has written about him recently. And it also caught my eye just because I thought he had a really interesting personal style and look. He looked to me a lot like um, he had kind of a look about him like Vincent Gallo, but like his own, he just had a really beautiful um, style about him. And so all that to say, I was really excited to try the perfumes. This is an example of one. And I just think perfume is just, I mean, forever interesting, but here's one reason. Uh, when I first sprayed this, I was like, I, I literally said, oh God, no, when I first sprayed it, because it smelled exactly like, and again, I mean, like, is this a bad thing? No, it's just something that wasn't throwing to me. It smelled exactly like it, a head shop that when I was growing up in the 80s, and that might say a lot, I got a little, I got a, a past with, um, you know, what do you buy at head shops? Things to um, use to, uh, I mean, some people buy incense and other things there, but <clears throat> drug paraphernalia. So anyway, um, it smelled to me like, you know, bad or tough times from the eighties for me, or, or just like, yeah, growing pains and uh hippiedom. And so when I first sprayed it, I just was like, Oh God, no, like why, why? And then, <laughs> I mean, this is just a perfect example of like, you have to give things time. It went from an absolute, Oh my God, no, how could you to oh my God, like heaven, heaven. And part of what I'm loving about this, and it makes me excited about the perfumer in the house and everything else is it smells like nothing. It, it went from something that was so familiar to like the way this settled down. It smells like no other perfume I own and that it takes this, like it feels daring with all these, with the combinations. And it just smells like, it's one of those scents that, that triggers something in me in a good way that makes me feel really good, alive, um, hopeful. It smells, it smells like hope. And I don't know, it smells so good to me. So what else did I write down as far as um, what it smells like? Oh, goodness. Um, I, I didn't even write down actually what its components are. Um, I think I was so like stuck in a feeling. Um, by the way, I forgot to say the scent is called Odor 93. Mio Fushini, I, ho I hope I'm saying that right, Odor 93. Um, this also smells kind of like really good soap, but it it's like a clash of elements that I have not really experienced in perfume. It's got green things going on for sure. 
It's got like, I would say aromatics. It's got a soapy quality. <sighs> I really don't know. I mean, you guys, I really don't know what else is in it. And here's why I could take guesses. Like I'm guessing that like, I mean, again, there are green things and like, I'm guessing there's orange blossom in here. Can't be positive though, but it just smells amazing. It just smells amazing. The combination smells incredible and it takes me to an emotional place. Yeah, so Richard would love to know what you think of this one. Um, I cannot, I'm so happy to have this. I'm gonna wear this until it's gone and I can't wait to try more of um, this artist scents based on this. Wow, so moving, hooey. Um, all right, I gotta move it along, don't I? Whew. Um, next. Um, Montel, um, I, I had mentioned, I'm not sure if he sent this based on this. Um, I had mentioned at one time that I have very little experience with Mota Montel and Mancera sense. Um, and some people that I really enjoy watching or learning from, like, um, if you guys haven't tried, uh, or listened to Centrifugal Force, I'm going to put his channel, a link to his channel below too. I think we grew up around the same time and have a lot of the same interests and his, First of all, his collection is crazy bananas. It, to me, leans really expensive, uh, but he has really interesting taste. And um, I find his videos to be some of the most enjoyable things ever to watch because um, he is a master of using like cultural references and like pulling all these mediums and things um, from other, from like TV and song and radio, blah, blah, blah. And anyways, his, his videos make me literally yell out laughing um, because they're so great. All being said, I've heard a lot about Montel and I'm interested in trying them. And so this is Montel's uh, Arabian's Tonka. I'm also a huge Tonka fan. Like if I had to say top five notes, I think Tonka would be in there. However, I'm just gonna be honest, I don't love this scent. Um, when I first sprayed it, I thought it was interesting. I first sprayed it in the fall and I think that is like, to me, the time to wear this. It's a super woody, oody Tonka. Um, and again, I'm just going to say, I think I'm cuddling up to the fact that Oud ain't my bag. Um, so this, uh, certainly grown me when it dried down. And again, this is another one where I think I would like it on other people, but it's not my bag. So there's that. Um, so Montel Arabian's Tonka. Next are two Ducita scents. Um, I first experienced Ducita. I mean, I've heard about them a lot. I don't have a lot of experience with them because they're very expensive and harder to get in smaller cities um, like mine. Um, but I experienced a couple Ducita scents last year when I went to Indigo Perfumery that's just about 10 minutes from my house. I'm sure a lot of you have experience with that, um, her even just ordering through the mail. Incredible shop uh, owner. And she has like the most awesome curated like collection of scents and she's so unpretentious and awesome. Highly recommend. Um, but I tried a couple of Ducita scents and it's interesting because Richard sent me one of the ones that I wrote down on my list being like, yeah, if I ever come into a lot of money, I love it. Um, I'm gonna start though with one I hadn't tried. And that is Oh, Ducita Anamkara, which I believe means like soulmate or like, um, God, what does Ana mean? Like, uh, um, you know, love of my heart or something. I think it means, I'm not exactly sure. But I wrote gorgeous jasmine tea. This Ducita, and this is the way I feel about the other Ducita. Um, I think there's a million, or at least when I was growing up, a million florals, right? And so I think a lot of people like uh, younger than I, they they hear floral and they go, oh, not for me. Um, I think because there are so many florals, it's hard to do one differently or really well. Um, somehow Ducita just, to me, does them really well. They're beautiful. And this really does not only have floral, so Jasmine really stands out, but I get tea and I get a bit of that like, I forgot to look and see if it's actually a note. I get a bit of that like peach apricot feel that you get in some oh God, is it oolong or uh, there are some teas that have that like um, beautiful fruitiness. And that is exactly what I get for this. I wish it wasn't as expensive. I think Juicy Descents are like around the 200 price point. Um, I wish this wasn't so expensive. If it wasn't, I would purchase it. Um, it is really beautiful. I don't know that I'll need it because of its um, price point, but I'm so glad to have tried it and to like, you know, get to experience his house a bit more. He also sent me the one that, one of the ones I was crazy about that I tried in Indigo last year and it's called Cavatina. Um, 
I, when I went to Indigo, uh, it was like at the height of COVID. And so before I visited, she kindly offered, this is through an email um, exchange, to pull some things based on notes that I liked or things so that she could like, it was so kind, basically like curate how I sniffed when I first walked in. Um, and I told her I was like deeply into like kind of like strong spring florals and greens and she pulled this and it was kind of perfect. It's um, many, many things I believe in the composition, but I wrote down Lily of the Valley green and a Lang Lang. To me, this smells like spring. It smells like spring in the same way. It reminds me a little of Diorissimo, if you've experienced that. It's just this very bright spring to me perfume. And I think those are hard to do well because though some of those scents can translate in a really screechy manner to me. This does none of those things. It's just beautiful. It smells like a the most gorgeous spring bouquet. And so again, Ducita, Cap, I hope it's pronounced Cavatina, um, very expensive, but I think worth it if, if you've got um, the Dolores. Yeah, gorgeous. Really excited to try these again. So thank you, Richard, so much. Um, all right, so next, um, I'm about halfway through. Um, next are a few um, various, and then we get into four scents by zoologists. So I'm going to start with a scent by, um, I hope it's pronounced Reina J, um, in this beautiful box and decant. This is called, it looks like, I believe it's tea habanero. And so at first when I read it, I was like, is this going to smell like pepper? Um, and definitely there's a little of that. Um, this is another one where again, I, I don't, I think you should wear whatever you like, no matter where you're at the gender spectrum. But this to me, I went, oh gosh, this is a bit more to me, masculine leaning that I think I would wear, but it is beautiful. Um, I get mostly, so I wrote pepper, spice, um, tobacco and incense. And this is another one. It's like when it dries down, it gets even better. Cause I think the sweeter quality of like the tobacco comes out. Um, I love incense scents, but I, because of that, I have so many already. So this is not something I would purchase, but man, it's beautiful. And man, I would love, again, my house to smell like this. I would love to hug somebody that smelled like this. Really, really nice. Don't need to buy it, but really beautiful. Glad to have tried it. Um, the next was, um, I have heard of Lubin out of Paris, but I have not tried anything from the house. This is, I hope it's pronounced, um, hi, Galad. Um, and this is a no for me. Uh, I'll just say it like, again, um, so it, it kind of, it had some of the qualities I feel like of the, um, Raina J. Um, but I find it to be, I found this to be even, even stronger and like really to me, I just smelled it and I was like, that smells like a father figure in my life. So I don't know that if I want to smell like it for that reason, but I wrote down amber wood spice light once it dries down. Um, it's nice again but it's very, to me, this smells like, um, this doesn't just smell like, um, like something I would like a man my age to where it smells like something my father might've even worn. Um, and my dad was, you know, whew, one of my heroes, but I don't think I want to smell like my dad. So there's that. Um, but very cool and really glad to have tried the house. Um, all right. Last but not least, Four Cents by Zoologist. Um, okay, so I'm going to be really honest here, and I hope that, I hope it comes through in a way that resonates with people and not in a way that sounds critical, because um, Lord knows we all have probably enough of that in our lives. But <clears throat> y'all know I'm so passionate about this perfume thing. In spite of that, and in spite of the fact that, like, I spend so much of my time on YouTube listening to other people that do this thing that I do, and I so deeply appreciate some of those people and I've made some incredible friends through that community and I've had grace and gratitude and generosity you know whatever but I'm also I have to be say I'm really struggling with the oversaturation um of youtubers who focus on just amassing perfume and often it feels like um, this is a thing where the channels of only the young and the beautiful, um, succeed. And frankly, um, often that also goes with the inexperienced. Um, I am really anti-ageist, but like it, it, it is a bit hard for me to like, it's just like, how many times can we talk about the same houses and the same things and et cetera, et cetera. Um, I find it to be an interesting, um, almost predicament that 
I think even some indie houses, I feel like get over talked about or over seen or, and I can't tell if it's because those indie perfumers or houses go hard at the YouTubers or if it's just that they're so good, truly that people, a lot of YouTubers um, find them interesting. Um, I feel like Zoologist gets talked about all the time to the point where like, I almost didn't want to try them, honestly, because I just am like, and I know this is going to be very un unpopular opinion, but I'm sharing it just because I feel like it's fair for some of us just to say like, we don't like everything and it's just okay. You know, it's like we, um, I, I feel like I'm trying to really get back to what I love and be honest about it. Um, but, uh, I just feel like, um, honestly, Zual just in my mind gets enough attention. And, and part of the reason I say that is some of my indie houses, my favorite indie houses get almost none. And I feel like it's because, um, the market's oversaturated in some ways and some of the most talented people I feel like get overlooked, um, solstice sense. So, all to say, um, I'm going to be honest, the other thing, the other reason I haven't been really excited about trying Zoologist is I don't love the aesthetics of the brand um, of uh, children's books and illustrations. Uh, I just am like, why are you, I don't know, I, it just doesn't resonate to me to create such a beautiful high-end brand with illustrations that look like children's illustrations. All right, so having said all that, um, I have, though, wondered what the hype was about. And so it was really cool to get this and to be like, oh, I can finally try them and and see. And I'm all over the map, honestly, with trying them. At first, I was like hating it, and then there was one that I really liked. So I'm going to dive into the scents. Hyrex was the first, and that was the one, you know, and again, all about honesty. Um, I have much appreciation for an indie perfumer, and I, I have no doubt that this person's crazy talented. People love him. I mean... And I'm sure they're, you know, whatever. I, I have so much respect, but I smell, oh my God, I can't believe how much I dislike this. Like that scent right now, I just was like, oh, it ruined me for a minute. Um, I could not get this scent out of my room. I am probably, I probably love animalic scents more than anyone I know. But yet every once in a while, I'll get one where I'll be like, oh yeah, like it's crazy because like, a lot of the animalic scents that other people around me don't like, they'll be like, oh, that smells like, <laughs> okay, we're going to talk about the things that animalic on a bad day smell like. Could smell anything like mm, feces to um, body odor to uh, like unwashed bodies to um, rank sex to, I mean, you could go on. Um, this smell, this might smell like all those things combined. Like I, and, and so realistic that I was like, so, you know, part of me was kind of like thrilled because I was like, wow, I'm always excited actually when I don't love a scent because I'm like, oh, great, one I don't have to buy. I'm also, frankly, I was kind of like excited by the fact that like this person took a chance. Now, I do not like the composition at all. And I I, I can't imagine, I, I can't, I like, not only do I have to get this out of the room, I have to like put it in a special bag. I don't ever want to smell it again. So there's that. Hyrax by Zoologist. Please tell me how wrong I am, everyone. All right, um, next. But you know, here's the thing, and this is why I feel safe saying this about Richard's sense that he sent me. Um, variety is the spice of life. And my guess is Richard's gonna be totally fine with the fact that like I adore some of these and don't. And this is the perfume experience. This is what it is. And um, I'm excited to hear what he likes and doesn't like out of these. Um, the next scent was Nightingale. The name excited me, frankly. I didn't look up any of these notes, although I think the notes are listed in the cards. I'm not gonna read them all to you, and I apologize for that, but here's part of why. You you can find videos on all of these, I promise you. Um, Nightingale uh, smells, I wrote, like the sweetest soap ever. Um, this isn't okay, it's just not, it doesn't jive, uh, or it doesn't, it's not something that I'm really like interested in. It just, I don't know that not much more to it to me. Um, the next one is Koala. And this is where I started to go, okay, maybe you don't hate the whole line. Like, um, I mean, I, I've heard about B for years. There are some that I think that if I tried, I would love them based on the notes that I love. But this is the first one that I wrote. I was like, oh, like this I might like and wear. Um, I just wrote fresh, weird, and great. Um, you know, I'm guessing it's based on the fact that, you know, what koalas eat and what, what they live among <laughs> or in the midst of um yeah fresh interesting weird I really like it who knows why I like it 
I don't know. I like it. Um, last but not least, here was the one where I was like, okay, you cannot hate this brand. You like the scent. Um, I tried Hummingbird. And again, I did not look at the notes, but my guess is this is based on, you know, what attracts hummingbirds, which is probably everything from flowers, fruit, and honey. And that is what I, I, I wrote. This is one of the most beautiful, sweet, fruity scents I have ever smelled. Sweet, floral, fruity. It's gorgeous. Absolutely transcending gorgeous. Like, absolutely beautiful. So that's the point where I was like, okay, Amy, you don't hate them all. You really love this, actually. And so now I do, of course, <laughs> try a few more from the house. Um, but was just trying to be really honest with you all um, about the just very diverse experience of trying perfumes and what you like and what you might not. Um, so, yes, that is the end of my zoologist experience for now. Was this not a really interesting, like, grouping of perfumes? I think it says a lot about Richard. Richard just tries a lot of things and I think is a risk taker. Um, and uh, I loved being able to try this diversity of scents. And I'm now interested in hearing, Richard, if you feel like, if you feel like leaving a comment just of those that you sent me that you might like or the ones that maybe I didn't like that, you know, whether you like them or not, or uh, I'm interested in knowing. So hope you are well. Hope you enjoy this wacky video um, and can't wait to talk soon. Peace. Bye.